Hello, beautiful souls. Welcome, my friends. This is the Divine Phoenix Rising Tarot. And hey, I'm Zachary. Thank you guys for joining me here and welcome to my table. So, collective, I was drawn and directed here to do another collective reading. Um, I do feel like there are some connections to the one that I had done a couple weeks ago with the Galactic Royalty. Um, to be honest with you guys, it's been a very um, interesting two weeks, I guess. It it kind of set me into this place, like I was talking about in that reading, beyond existence. And as I have been floating in that area, many questions have been coming to mind for me. Um, and I finally have gotten to a point where something is kind of making sense. And I was told to sit down here today and get this together. So I want to go over um, what was seen in meditation. And then uh, a couple archetype cards were pulled. And then we'll move into the tarot to explore this a bit further. If you are interested um, before watching this or after to go back and watch that Galactic Royalty, I encourage you to. I do feel like there are some concepts that are kind of kind of connected. I mean, everything's connected, but anyway, so, um, collective. Hello. Um, what came through first as I have been sitting with this <laughs> and meditating today in particular was hold the vision. Um, I received, uh, I go right, you know, right down here. I received all of this message. And then the last thing that was given was, or that they had said was, we have given you much. Um, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> it's it's taken me a little bit of time to sit down and get this recorded even. I went for a walk, it felt like I was kind of putting it off, and the reason is because I do feel like there's a lot that's been given here. And not just a lot, but some really important pieces of information. And um, I've been a little bit nervous because I don't want to misrepresent this. Um, there was a symbol that was given to me here. And I'll show you guys here in a second um, and explain what it's used for. But what was going through my mind was, um, I mean, in the Bible, I, I don't know the exact verse, but that whole be not afraid when the, the angel appeared, be not afraid. Um, and that's what they're saying to me. And then um, I had seen recently, I guess, a more accurate um, translation of that because of the original language and the context and all of that is actually something to the effect of, Please stop screaming, human. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so, um, just thought that was a bit funny. But anyway, um, we have given you much. So ne next, the uh, what came through was effable and ineffable. <laughs> um, so effable is a word that means um, like being able to or capable of being described with words. Ineffable means too grand or too big to be described with words. Um, I am kind of brought back to that, like the galactic reading with the whole concept of light and dark or experience here as well. Uh, there are things that we can explain verbally and there are things that we cannot explain, right? So I'm just being directed to this experience um, and a non-experience again, uh, even kind of outside of light and dark. Um, I went down the rabbit hole <laughs> these last couple of weeks looking at dimensions in particular and, um, you know, this experience that we're in right now, quantum physics wise, they, they classify that as like an alpha dimension experience and it goes all the way up to um, omega, the omega dimension, which is <laughs> very, very interesting. Um, we might talk about, talk about that a little bit more as we go along. So next I was shown a barn owl. Um, this is an interesting piece of uh, symbology, I feel like. The owl can definitely symbolize wisdom, but what I was actually brought to was um, <laughs> the movie The Fourth Kind, where they there were these people who were all reporting this memory of like this white owl or this barn owl outside of their window. And after some regression and um, hypnosis and that sort of thing, they're finding that this barn owl was actually a memory that was implanted to cover up these alien abductions. Um, so my whole, like, wrapping that up, I feel like we're being drawn to this idea of, like, a false memory. 
And based on what's coming forward here, this makes sense to me. I feel like this is an opportunity. Um, we're being given an opportunity or a chance right now to see a little bit further beyond this illusion or um, this experience that we are experiencing in this timeline to be able to move to another timeline. So next, next they said um, the one. And I said, the one what? <laughs> And they said, the one when. Um, so as I'm going through this, I'm like, Does this, is this a choice? And then I'm, next I'm shown this symbol here. So I'll get to this. <laughs> I'll get to this. Uh, so this is the part where I was like, I feel a little bit nervous about sharing this because it's a very powerful tool. Um, and the encouragement that I'm getting with this is, uh, and I'll explain this, is to, um, to essentially honor the power that this possesses. Okay. So I'm gonna show you this symbol. You can pause the video if you'd like to write it out so that you can um, use its function, okay? So this is what was given to me here. And they called it the Puddle Jumper. So um, as I was drawing this out, first of all, um, I started with, so it's a square here. It's kind of like, I don't know how else to describe this. It's, it's like, um, it started off as a tesseract here, but then a circle came out instead of another square. A tesseract is a square in the fourth dimension or the beta dimension. <laughs> so um, as I was drawing this out at first, I had drawn one with a little bit more narrow curvature and they said, stop, start again. <laughs> so I just feel it's important to impress. This needs to be a nice wide circle or a nice wide bend. So puddle jumper here, what is this for? Um, this is to hop timelines. <laughs> this is to make dimensional jumps. So um, I was given the instruction with this as well, be careful my chosen. Um, and that's where I was like, okay, what? <laughs> this, I feel a little bit nervous delivering this message. Um, so they said, uh, oh, first of all, this is being held in the mind's eye in meditation. So the way to utilize this technology, this symbol here, this glyph, is to use it as like a uh, a key or a key in a keyhole access to jump directly to another timeline. So they're saying, be careful, my chosen. Um, bias does not exist here on the bridge. So the way that I took that was that this symbol, um, it, it's really important that you guys know where you want to go um, as best as you can because this symbol doesn't care about anything outside of what it is you're choosing to do, okay? So um, I don't want it to be too heavy, but also I just feel that it's important to express that. And I know this is a long meditation, you guys, but this is this is what came through. And then we'll get into the, the cards. Um, so I was told that the bridge is closing and it is also opening, which I thought was uh, very interesting. I'm not entirely sure what that means. I was shown kind of this concept of like an eternal folding in, um, it could be representing, you know, like the past, the future moment coming in together. When we step outside of this third dimension, um, things get very interesting as far as what is accessible and what, what it is that we would be experiencing. So it makes me, what I kind of get from it is like this, this moment will never be the same. There's something about this moment eternally closing and opening at the same time. Um, so, okay, <laughs> still with me? So let's get into the archetype cards that came through here for you. Uh, two of them. I was told to choose two. So the first one that came through was Mountain and then Kairos. And I love how on Kairos here, I feel like this is very um, reminiscent of like a, a biblical angel and one of those eyes. So the Mountain, I was told to read this directly from the book here and I just lost my place. Hold up. Hold up. The Mountain. The mountain. So um, the ascent, the peak, the insurmountable. The mountain stands eternally in our awareness, calling us towards its peak. It stirs up stoic and regal feelings, reminding us of the long line of spirits, sages, sadhus, and gods that made their humble thrones within its snowy peaks. Beware, though, as the mountain can affect us in two ways. It can inspire and enliven us to rise to new heights and peak experience, Yet it can also create isolation, competitiveness, and an inflated sense of self. 
Standing upon its heights can activate the purest and the perfectionist in us, creating separation from those we deem to be below. No matter how high you ascend, remember that it is within the core of the mountain that the gems, minerals, and jewels reside. If you think it's all about going up, you're following the fool's path and missing the miner's magic. So in light, grounded in the eternal, steadfast and uplifting, when in the dark, ominous, daunting, isolating, and frigid. So kind of bringing it back to um, the last collective message that came through, uh, being grounded in the eternal, because we were talking about um, this eternal experience outside of an experience. Um, I feel like you're just being directed here right now to make a very important choice. Um, we always have this important choice going on of um, an ability to hop timelines or dimensions. Um, my understanding of the way that all of that works is a lot of those timelines and dimensions are essentially like, like the way things are playing out, whether we had the same starting point or a different starting point, every single possible choice that we could make, all of those existences existing side by side at the same time, um, I kind of am getting this feeling that the experience you're in right now, the consciousness that you have here is where you have chosen to be. And all of those other experiences happening at the same time are kind of like um, a ghost in the machine or a little bit more like code. And the purpose of that is to play out for the soul that's participating here um, what is best what factors are going to lead to the most optimal outcome, okay? Like if we were starting a business, we would want to know, uh, and we want that business to be successful, as successful as possible, we would want to know every single component that could go into starting that business, the amount of capital needed, um, the choices ne needed to be made, the paths needed to be taken to get you to success. And I feel like that's kind of what all of these dimensional experiences are doing. They're all options, right? So having Puddle Jumper come through here, <laughs> and I'm, I'm curious to start using this myself, to be honest with you guys. Um, it seems really important though, like I said, to get your intention pretty squared away, to know where it is that you do want to go because you can go anywhere with this and there is anywhere to go. Um, so Kairos coming through here. Kairos is about time. Mythic time and synchronicity. Um, patience and precision stand, was standing out here to me. And I find it interesting that we're talking about jumping dimensional timelines um, and have time come through. We are essentially like a third dimensional being here in, or a, a fourth, we're a third dimensional being experiencing the fourth dimension from the third dimension standpoint, okay? And the fourth dimension can be Time, we experience time in a linear fashion, but time doesn't really stretch beyond this dimension, okay? So I feel like this is just um, an encouragement here pointing out that we're going to step outside of this concept of time. Whew, okay, I know that was a long one, you guys. Thank you for hanging in there with me. So I want to get into the tarot um, to explore this message a bit further. And I was told to do... Um, a high priestess spread, okay? High priestess spread does involve the last card that's pulled. I'll lay it all out here, but the last card that is pulled is um, face down until we get to the end of the reading. If it's a major arcana card, then the high priestess is revealing her secret. If it isn't, then um, she's not revealing her secret. We don't take it into consideration. So I don't know if um, we're going to do an extended on this yet or not. I was told if she's revealing her secret, we'll do an extended. If not, then we won't. Okay. So spirit, um, two swords here at the split to start. Yeah, I need to make a decision, the choice like we were talking about. What do we, what do we have going on here for the collective? Can we get some additional input here? What do they need to know? Here we go. <laughs> Six of pentacles at the bottom here. Um, I do get this like reciprocal energy um, drawn back to making this jump here, this dimensional jump. Uh, what you're putting into it is, is what you're receiving back is where you're going. Where you want to go is where you're going to go. Okay. All right. Let's see. Ooh, the tower, 
um, Knight of Wands comes out here. So this is the general energy, Hierophant here in current energy that's going on. Um, the Emperor in energy that is gaining momentum. Temperance in energy that is leaving or waning. Um, we have the Fool here in what's in the dark. Queen of Cups in what is in the light. Nine of Swords as far as next step. Ooh, interesting. Okay. And then I don't know what the ninth card is. That's a secret. Let's get into it. So, um, the tower here to start. This is very, uh, this is very, I'll show you the card here. The tower is about, um, cataclysmic change is what comes through. It's a, it's a violent upheaval. It's a flash of, of, um, inspiration, being able to see the truth in something, the truth coming through. And in that process, things can collapse. I kind of get, um, like back to the, the puddle jumper <laughs> symbol that came through here. This is your reality that you are in currently needs to close in order for you to, um, to move to another one. And it's not, that's interesting. Like with the bridge, what's coming to mind that it's both opening and closing. It's not that the timeline is disappearing. It's that your consciousness is leaving that timeline. This is interesting, you guys. <laughs> um, having that come through. Anything else on the tower here, please? This um, centipede, whatever this is here, very much reminds me of like an interdimensional being. This is kind of like it looks a bit terrifying to look at. Um, drawn back to that be not afraid stop screaming human please <laughs> it's fine um i feel like this what i'm seeing is like a, an experience or a universe collapsing into a singularity through like a black hole uh in order in order to move to this other timeline it may feel like you're being pushed through the eye of a needle here this is the part where there's this encouragement to be not afraid. That's how it's supposed to feel <laughs> as a human. Um, like I said, this third dimensional being having access or, or an experience in the fourth dimension as well. Um, can I get a little bit more? <laughs> there's the tower at the bottom there too. <laughs> so, okay. I do take that as encouragement that um, that's exactly correct. Lightning. What about lightning? Danger. <laughs> High voltage. I feel like it may, um, it's really important to prepare yourself for this journey is what's coming through. If, if this is something that you're going to take advantage of, um, and it's not anything extreme, just like making sure that you have your sleep is good, right? Your nutrition is, is good, is decent, your water, to make sure you're in as calm and collected of a place as possible before puddle jumping here. Okay. Um, it's really important with that. The, there's no bias. There's no bias on the bridge. Um, this is your responsibility to encapsulate your experience to move it. Okay. There's not anything else that's going to do that for you. <laughs> so I don't feel like it's something to freak yourself out about. Just make sure that you are in as healthy of a place as you possibly can be before taking advantage of this. Okay. Anything else here on the tower, please spirit. The daughter swords. <laughs> what is that? A freaking barn owl? <laughs> Why? Yes, it is. I, I get this feeling you've done this before. Okay. That's what's coming through. The daughter of swords is um, a page of swords. So like a request to learn something. Um, to pay attention visually, the mind's eye. Okay. I feel like this is just drawing back to the importance. Make sure that you are in as healthy a place as possible. If you struggle with keeping things, keeping images in your mind's eye, to start practicing that, okay? Before flippantly jumping through this <laughs> puddle jumping here, okay? Um, let's keep moving forward. But the, <laughs> the barn owl makes me, it reminds me of um, what I was saying there in meditation. This, like there's this false memory that's been placed over. You've done this a million times is what they're saying. You've done this before. You've, you've puddle jumped before many, many times. It's a natural skill that you have, but coming here in this human experience, it's been covered up as a different memory. Okay. It's a part of what's been taken away as far as knowledge goes. 
Um, so Knight of Wands coming in here to cross this energy. This is Knight of Wands is about um, spontaneity, creativity, getting back up and trying again. There is a request with the Knight of Wands to uh, not be too hasty, okay? Back to what I was saying here earlier. I feel like this message is just leading up to, to say, uh, get ready for the trip, okay? You don't want to just up and leave. Um, make sure that you know where you're going, okay? And if this is something that you're not quite sure where it is you do want to go or where you're supposed to go, now is a great time to start sitting down, meditating, connecting to your higher essence. Interesting. Your higher self. Um, those that are here to guide you as well. Start working on your mental visualization and communication between those entities that are outside of ourselves that are here to guide us to our highest good. Okay. I do also feel that it's important to, if you're not in the habit of establishing um, a zone in what is able to come in to communicate with you, now's a good time to do that, okay? Because otherwise, anything can just come through and it's difficult to know what to trust. So to start establishing protective boundaries, requesting entities that are here for your highest good is very important, okay? Okay, all right. Um, anything else here with the Knight of Wands, please, Spirit? So two of so okay, two of swords comes through here again, and uh, mother of pentacles is what fell out. So two of swords, like I said, there's this um, a need to make a decision here. This is oh interesting. That picture in the center there is kind of like a black sun or the black hole sun, uh, the black hole. Like I was saying being being crunched into a singularity. You need to make the decision to take this trek. It should not be something that's done flippantly. Mother of Pentacles, the um, Queen of Pentacles, this is also a card about choices. So the choice here is coming down to the choice. Your choice is very important. Our free will is very important. Just make sure that you know where you're going is what I'm getting, okay? So current energy right now, and this makes sense, having the Hierophant come through, um, and I was led to use this deck. I do, I did use this on the last collective here, but all of the eyeballs that are on all of these decks here, even the back or these cards even have eyes. It is very reminiscent to me of like a, a biblically accurate angel as well. Um, and my understanding is that the angelic realm or the angels are a part of the Omega dimension, which is essentially... <laughs> having access to not only all of the different possibilities that life can be, different starting points, but also, uh, and universes, but also um, different universes that may have different laws of physics, all kind of standing side by side, like a form of an architect, an architect, essentially. Uh, but the Hierophant here is about spiritual evolution. So this makes sense. I feel like this is coming at a time where we are ready to utilize. If you're watching this right now, you're ready to utilize this tool. The encouragement is to, you know, make sure to <laughs> wait 30 minutes before you swim after eating. You can do this. Just make sure that you're clear on where it is that you want to go. Okay. Because you'll go wherever it is that you're asking to go. Anything else here on the Hierophant, please, Spirit? Seven of Pentacles comes through here. There's the Hierophant at the bottom too. <laughs> I love this game, Spirit. How fun. Um, <laughs> so Seven of Pentacles. Seven of Pentacles is a need for patience. Uh, it's a need to hone skills. I do feel like, and this is the current energy that's happening right now. Back to the encouragement um, to, to prepare, okay? To prepare for this trip. This There is no dire need to, to jump right now, okay? Um, if you're ready to do that, great. Um, but the encouragement here is to be patient. The time is... Oh, did I... I don't think I mentioned this either. I did write it down, though. Yes, okay. The time being ripe. So in Kairos here, in the book, it mentions um, the word evil has roots way back when. Uh, it comes from the word unripe. <laughs> so there's this, um, 
notion um, going on here that like, I just find that interesting. First of all, evil, evil is essentially just the wrong time. <laughs> interesting. Um, I'm just, the message that's coming through on that is like, you will know, you will know when the time is right. Do not try to force it. It is falling into evil. Okay. To force, to force this motion. You'll know when the time is right to do this, especially if, uh, mm, okay. I was going to say, if you're like, if you're meant to do this, but I'm being told this is for everyone. This is not a, this is not a gatekeeping situation. Okay. This is not a symbol that only chosen ones are able to take advantage of. Okay. There is a timeline somewhere for all of us where we're all chosen. <laughs> okay. So let's keep going here. Um, the energy that is gaining momentum here for you guys right now, you have the emperor. The emperor is about power, control, strength. It's about being present to the divine masculine energy, the light, a time that is ripe. <laughs> so the time of ripening, ooh, interesting. Take a bite. <laughs> it's coming, I feel like you, it's coming. <laughs> ooh, interesting. Got all the chills on that. There was a, when I was a kid, <laughs> like very young, um, thought of a bunk bed when I was three, had a traumatic brain injury, and since then have had just a very interesting life. But there was a moment I would go into my parents' room all the time because I would have these like, um, I, I have no idea, honestly, what they were. Um, trances, leaving my body, not sure, but it would freak me out. It would feel like, my hands were uh, made of toothpicks, like the walls were close, but also far away. And um, I couldn't like ground into an experience. So I'd go into my parents' room and say, like, I don't feel real. I don't know what's going on, I'm scared. And there was this one time that I was heading back to bed. My mom came out in the hallway, put her hand on my shoulder and turned me around. She said my eyes were just darting all over the place. She asked if I was okay. And I said, it's coming, it's coming. I'm not ready, it's coming. <laughs> And I, what I remember seeing in that situation that night was uh, laying in my bunk bed, <laughs> we didn't learn, uh, and my consciousness zoomed out the window into this big, great black space. And I saw this shape that kind of looked like this. Could be a hole, could be a spacecraft, I don't know. But that, uh, that just popped up, okay? I felt encouraged to share that with you. It feels like whatever that is, that could be the portal here. That could be the puddle jumper action. Um, make sure that you're ready, okay? Fear has no place here in, in the bridge. Interesting. Ooh. <laughs> okay, okay. Anything else here with um, the Emperor, please, Spirit? I was looking like this one's going to be a longer one. But you know what, you guys? I, um, I'm not going to push timing on this. This feels like a very important message, and it's coming out in the time that it's needing to take. So... What else do we have here on the Emperor, please, Spirit? Three of Swords, ooh. Six of Cups here at the bottom as well. Six of Cups is your inner child, kind of back to what I was talking about there. Nostalgia, going back to the past. With um, Three of Swords coming through, if I can pick this up. With Three of Swords coming through here, this is heartbreak, loss, stormy emotions. Um, typically the encouragement with the three of swords is to heal the heart, to take these swords out of the heart. I feel like gaining access and gaining power. What does that mean? The space, my lights are flickering. <laughs> what in the heck? <laughs> okay. Um, please say that again. What I'm seeing is um, in taking these swords out of the heart, that space that is existing without the sword is needed in order to be ready for this trip. There isn't such thing as a perfectly healed state, but what, what is coming through on this is like, that's your bias. Okay, okay. If there's still something from childhood, potentially from your past, someone from your past, um, something to do with your family that needs to be healed in the heart still, um, you're being encouraged to take your power back in that way. 
before making this trip. Interesting. That lion is standing out to me too, with strength. Okay, let's keep moving forward here. The time, the time is ripe, okay? We're moving from unripe to ripe here, but there is a need, like you can't, you can't take these swords with you. What I'm seeing are, is like this portal, going through this portal, these swords are catching the edges of this portal. Um, you're not, you're not aerodynamically correct. <laughs> Thanks, Spirit. You're not aerodynamically correct to um, travel through here with these swords still. 3113 on the timer there. Okay. So the energy that is waning or leaving here in this situation, you have temperance. Um, temperance is about balance, peace, harmony. It's alchemy, taking one thing and turning it into another. In the standard Rider Waite card, there is an angel. And angels in the tarot, um, or humans, symbolize angels. And angels are like the highest ideal of, of the human experience, okay, in the tarot. Um, temperance being connected to Sagittarius, it represents this process of like, um, recognizing is as we go through the Zodiac, we, we all go through the Zodiac. We all, they are all, um, components of the human experience that we all experience. So with Sagittarius, once we hit Sagittarius after Scorpio, Scorpio takes us into the depths, into the dark. And then Sagittarius, um, realizes these components of light that they had, but they're also reminded of what's in their dark. And so they have the, um, mission once we're in Sagittarius to, um, start better balancing those components of ourselves. Uh, I feel like you guys are coming out of this process of recognizing this. The wool has been taken off of your eyes here as far as you thinking that you are just this being made of light that doesn't exist here in this realm. Even if you come from somewhere where it is only light to be human, you now are light and dark. Are there things outside of that? I believe so, yes. But right now you guys are um, rectifying those different components of yourself this is the part that's leaving and i feel like this is what's leading you into really healing whatever's needed here in the heart so that you can take this journey i am seeing the the skeleton or the skulls here in the timepiece standing out beating the clock beating time stepping outside of time <laughs> interesting I'm really excited to do some meditating with this myself, you guys. Um, I'm really excited about this message. Uh, can we get some more information here on temperance, please, Spirit? What else do we need to know here? So Nine of Wands. Ooh, cool. Nine of Wands and um, uh, Ten of Wands, if I could speak here. So Nine and Ten of Wands. I feel like, I love, first of all, that we're going 9 to 10, getting to the end of that suit to start again at the Ace of Wands, new journey here. You guys are getting ready to hyper jump where it is that you do want to go. Nine of Wands is the Wounded Warrior. <coughs> Excuse me. It's about um, hanging on. <laughs> Hold on for one more day. You guys are almost there. What you have been building, what you've been fighting for, what you've been protecting is worth it. And you're getting to a point here with the Ten of Wands. This is releasing something, a burden on the heart. <laughs> well, hey, releasing something that's been heavy on the heart. So I do feel like those of you that are watching this message, you have been putting work in consciously to do this, okay? To shift your energetic experience, your emotional experience here. And then we're moving into um, getting ready to fully close that wound in the heart so that we can travel. Cool. Um, so what is in the dark here? You guys have the fool. <laughs> I love this actually. And I kind of had a little bit of a glimpse that um, actually as I was pulling the secret card, and we haven't got there yet, but uh, as I was pulling that, what came through was um, a card that symbolized you. And I was like, I don't know what that means. You know, I don't know what card that would be. Well, it would be the fool. And this isn't in the secret spot. This is what's in the dark. So still not really known. The fool is the archetype is us. We're going through this journey through the tarot 
and learning all of these different components of human experience and psyche, psychology. Uh, but The Fool is about having faith, taking a step into the unknown to start a new journey. So being in the dark here, I do feel like before taking advantage of this puddle jumping, there's not really going to be a time where you do feel maybe 100% ready. <laughs> there is an encouragement to um, to lean into faith, okay? Get yourself as prepared as you can be and then trust for the rest. It's coming and you are ready, okay? Um, I almost said Gemini. <laughs> you are ready, Gemini. Hmm? Anything else here on the Fool, please, Spirit? So you have Six of Wands come through here too. Or Six of Swords, excuse me, Six of Swords. Um, this is interesting. So six of swords is recognition. It is a victory being celebrated for the battle that you've come through with this imagery here. What this is, um, reminding me of is this process. Like you're here, you're needing to recognize what is going on here and where you want to go and taking advantage of this timeline jumping, um, that is crossing the rainbow bridge here, <laughs> the bridge. This is the bridge. Interesting. I'm seeing kind of like the, um, what is that called in Norse mythology? The Biofrost? I don't think that's quite right. Somebody will know, but that's kind of what I'm seeing is like, that bridge is, is light. Interesting. Okay. Let's keep going. So what's in the light here? You guys have Queen of Cups. Queen of Cups is intuition, healing, friendship comes through. Interesting. I don't want to be left behind. What does that mean? Mm. Mm. Interesting. I do get this feeling for some of you, um, you may be thinking this already or at some point may. Um, this concept of, oh yeah, there's even little, little fishies chasing this other one. This feeling of like, I don't want to leave my friends behind or I want them to come with me. Um, and what I'm getting with that is it's not about that is what they're saying. It's not about that. That's not even a factor. Okay. That's not even something that will ultimately concern you. Okay. There are more friends to be had. Okay. <laughs> I like it. It's protecting your emotions though as well. Um, so I feel like there's this call to examine maybe how much you may be protecting your own emotions because this is needed to dive a little bit deeper here to work on healing, whatever this three of swords activity is so that you can make this clean jump to lift the little, don't be afraid to lift the lid. Okay. Let's get another, can I get a little bit more info here? Please spirit on Queen of Cups, why Queen of Cups? Why? <laughs> Four of Wands comes through here. So this is um, interesting. It kind of, this square here in the center, it is more of a diamond, but it is drawing me back to this puddle jumper. Four of Wands is crossing a major threshold. It's a major accomplishment. It is um, fleeting though, whatever this moment is, this milestone. I feel like um, this is the, mm, okay, that makes sense. This jump in making this jump, it is quick. It isn't an everlasting activity. Um, even here, I see that kind of like zooming through a portal. It's a very quick process is what comes through here. You won't even recognize yourself. Interesting. Okay. What does that mean? What I'm getting is that um, this is a situation. You may not remember that you jumped timelines here. Interesting. Okay. Why is that important? They're saying it's for our own benefit. Okay. <laughs> So we can check that off our list. What does that mean? I feel like they're just enjoying their own humor a bit. As a guide or as a, you know, interdimensional being, 
upper echelon dimensional being, um, what it is they do in helping humans. Um, Spirit has a, a wild sense of humor for sure. I've heard a lot of people saying that with swearing, especially like enlightened or ascended people don't don't use curse words. I promise you, <laughs> I promise you that Spirit has um, a wild sense of humor and very much enjoys using um, swear words, okay? Some of them. <laughs> it's not a bad thing. But uh, anyway, back to what we're doing here. So next step, what's coming forward here? So this is, I felt this was interesting in laying this, this whole message is interesting, but laying this spread out here, Nine of Swords. Nine of Swords is um, insomnia. It's a nightmare, anxiety. It could be mourning the loss of something too. What I'm getting from this is a reminder, um, kind of back to these swords. Three is a multipli multiplicate of nine as well, three, six, nine. Um, it's important to work on these swords. There's something about removing yourself from this nightmare. And I feel like this is the process of a puddle jumping here. Um, this is what is next, leaving this nightmare or not, or you could stay here. I feel like the point, what's coming through is, is this idea of choice or reality of choice. We can go wherever we want to go. We get trapped though, thinking this is it. Letting fear take over. Fear not. Stop screaming, human. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> oh man, okay. Um, why Nine of Swords, please, spirit? Rising ever higher. Okay, what does that mean? You got two of wands here too. Okay, yeah. Um, two of wands is a neat, and there's the high priestess there. You cheeky, you cheeky. Um, this is, I feel like, they have a sense of humor today because um, we're getting closer to the secret. I'm excited to see what's going to be revealed. Uh, but the two of wands is a need to make a decision to move from where you are comfortable to where it may be uncomfortable for the sake of growth, for expansion. Could symbolize travel. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Um, so this is just a reminder here that this travel, this movement, this change, it comes down to you. You have to make the decision to move yourself out of where it is comfortable. And I'm putting that in quotes because it doesn't have to be comfort for it to be a comfort zone. This is just what you're used to. The devil that you know, right? So this is an encouragement to make the choice to um, step away from what you're used to, what you know, to examine what is actually out there because there's a lot. There's a lot, a lot. An axolotl, you guys. <laughs> Okay, I feel like let's do three pieces of advice here surrounding this message, and then we'll look at if she's, um, oh, you want an animal. Okay. If she's going to release her secrets. Her secrets. I kind of feel, I'm hoping that she does, you guys. I'm hoping she does. <laughs> um, Spirit, what do you want the collective to know here? Additional messages. Surrounding this trip. Deer. Oh, interesting. So deer energy here. This is, um, I'm being told to read it from the book. It's, it's like a motherly energy as well. It kind of reminds me of queen, queen of cups. That energy surrounding like the birth of a child is kind of what they describe here. Loving, intuitive, graceful, the mother. The deer represents the feminine aspects of earth energy. This energy is available to all creatures, regardless of gender, but is especially potent in new parents. During the first few days, they are fully present, nurturing, and calm. Their inner beauty radiates, oh, okay. Their inner beauty radiates a sense of grace, um, calms the room. A deer personality affects others in this way, drawing them toward a quiet tenderness. The deer card may appear when a birth or celebration of a new life draws near. <laughs> or when a situation calls for absolute gentleness and compassion. So imbalance, receptive, compassionate, and nurturing. When out of balance, concerned and protective to bring into balance nature and children. So what's coming through for me on this is um, this process, jumping puddles here, jumping timelines. This is essentially like a, a birth. I'm actually getting, you know, all of that imagery of the tunnel here, the hole, where was that other one? Mm, the Two of Swords. 
uh, being pressed through like this black hole, moving through the eye of the needle in that way. So with the deer coming through, what I'm getting is uh, an encouragement as you are working on this Three of Swords, whatever that is, getting ready to make this jump, to treat this process as if you are the parents, because you are, with our like internal family systems, you are the parent um, getting ready to protect, to celebrate, to enjoy everything about this new child. Um, this is a part of getting ready for this jump. It's like sending sending yourself off in um, with good grace. Interesting. Okay. Cool. All right. Okay. Let's find out what the secret is here. Let's see if, if she's going to reveal her secret here. Oh, she's not. So no extended today, you guys. I will show you what this is, but we're not going to include it in the reading. Seven of Cups is what was shown. So as far as secrets go, I feel like um, the secret is not being released here right now because there's uh, much to be learned is what they're saying. We have given you much. There is much to be learned. Ooh. <laughs> okay, cool. Do you want an Oracle card to close this out? They're saying no, but what they're, okay, so what they're showing me here, that's a very interesting image, is this flower and like the stamens inside of it are all elongate, like they're coming out like tentacles. What does that mean, spirit? What do you want me to do with that? Okay, they're saying enjoy the ride, even in this you shall be held, okay? Enjoy the show. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Is there anything else here you want me to close off? Three pieces of advice. And we'll say goodbye here, you guys. Um, three pieces of advice for the collective here. Just the bottom. Stress, cleanse, and detoxify from unnecessary commitments. I just feel like that's attached to uh, like the three of swords, Getting, making sure that um, the parts that are unripe <laughs> are removed from your experience here or become ripened before you make this uh, this track. Anything else here, please, spirit? Celebration, good times come from hard work, time spent in good company. You're almost there, that's what they say, okay? You're almost there, you guys. This is exciting. <laughs> Yay. Last piece of advice here. Overcoming obstacles, get back on your feet, gain strength from difficult situations. Just totally Knight of Wands energy. That was what was here in your uh, general to start. So there's just a reminder here and pay attention. Look out for signs from the divine. Acknowledge red flags. Follow the rules of the road is what they're saying. I'm just being brought back to pay attention to the instructions that were given and utilizing this. Okay. It's just important to go where it is that you want to go. Ego has no place in this journey okay okay thank you spirit all right you guys thank you so much for joining me here um i will probably be doing i'm not sure how often i'll do collective readings but um as i'm called to do it um i hope this was helpful i really enjoyed sharing this message with you guys so please take care of yourselves and um get ready it's about to get good okay be well <laughs>